Navajo land uh, at St. Christopher's Mission in the Utah region. And we bring you morning prayer this morning from St. Christopher's in the Utah region. It's a great gift to be a guest amongst you, and I hope you will join us uh, with a order of morning prayer found on page 75 in the Book of Common Prayer. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Jubilate, found on the bottom of page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lambs. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this. The Lord himself is God, he himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Oh. 
Testament reading is from Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards the, toward Huran. He came to a pla certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. As he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome this, this is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. He called the place Death Bethel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 16. The Song of Zechariah, found at the bottom of page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets of old, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The epistles from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you have live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by spirit you put the, to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery, to fall back into fear. But you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And the children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present times are not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us, for the Creator waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God, for the creation was subjected to futility not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. 
in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its heart bondage to decay and will attain the, the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we are saved, now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 21, Te Deum. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. And then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers. Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat in my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears 
listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Shijay Shanich Beish. Boil my heart for me. These are the words I think Jacob might have used in the wilderness of Paran in our lesson this morning. If he had been Navajo. Instead, our English translation reads, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. My friends, thank you for joining me in this walking reflection on our lessons this morning. Please pray with me. God before us, God beside us, God behind us, God above us, be now between us a bridge through which your truth may move. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before my family and I came out to Navajo land to serve at St. Christopher's Mission this summer, my friend Margaret Benally sent me a book titled Boil My Heart for Me. Some of you may know it. It is a book written by Father Baxter Liebler, the Episcopal priest who came out to this place in the early 1940s to establish St. Christopher's Mission. And I've wondered about this title, Boil My Heart for Me. I understand that it is the English translation of a Navajo phrase used sometimes to refer to charging car batteries. And so, Margaret, forgive me, as I've read this book, I've sometimes wondered, why is Father Liebler calling his book this? Is he writing about charging car batteries? In fact, it has taken me six weeks of living in this land and amongst you, its people, to realize that Father Liebler is writing something much deeper. He is writing about giving a heart a new life. You see, despite Father Liebler's Belagana paternalism, what Mark Mary Boy describes as the patronizing tone of a typical white person, I think something pretty remarkable happened in his time in this place. It was a bit like Jacob. He left his family, he left his friends, he left his home for a distant land. <clears throat> I imagine the land he was traveling in looked something like this, the canyon lands of the San Juan River. And yet, I recognize that he was confronted by new languages, new customs, new traditions, and I'm told he did a pretty remarkable job in learning those new languages, customs, and traditions. His Navajo is better than mine, but I think I still have time. Unlike Jacob, Father Liebler, at least as best we can tell, was not fleeing an elder brother angry over a stolen birthright. Um, no, Father Liebler thought he was coming to this place to bring God to a people who did not know him. And I think like Jacob, Father Liebler was not expecting to encounter God in the wilderness. He writes that he, quote, searched for years to find an aborigine untouched by the Christian tradition so he would not have to unteach them. In a fundraising pamphlet, Father Liebler describes what he calls the Navajo religion as, quote, consisting largely in observances of elaborate taboos, rites, and ceremonies based on a desire to avoid bad luck and health, to seek health, well-being, and harmony. In the same pamphlet, Father Liebler states, 
that he is, quote, undertaking pioneering work amongst the pagan Navajo Indians in the northern part of their ancient reservation. It must have been a great surprise to Father Liebler when he discovered that the Spirit has been at work in this land and amongst you, its people, long before he arrived in the San Juan River Canyon lands. Indeed, I think, at least in my experience, I know that this land and you, its people, have taught me the timeless truth of Psalm 139, that the Spirit always precedes us, always. And to his credit, Father Liebler became open to the work of the Spirit in this place and amongst you. And I think it changed him. More than once, he accepted invitations from Navajo medicine men to pray for sick children. On one occasion, a medicine man asked Father Liebler to join him in praying for his own infant son. In that request, the medicine man told Father Liebler, I make good prayers. You make good Jesus talk. And holding two fingers together, intertwined, he added, too, too good makes strong good. You see, even the medicine man understood that there was no competition between these traditions. There was no forced choice between the old way and a new way, that it is only God's way. Years later, Father Liebler observed, quote, the idea of a Christian missionary who did not want to destroy all that the Navajo held dear in their ceremonies, but even participated in them from time to time, was a source of surprise and pleasure. I think perhaps in his time here with you, the people of Navajo land, Father Liebler learned the lesson of our gospel this morning. It is not us, human beings, who plant the seeds. The planting is the work of Creator. It is ours only to tend those seeds that they might one day bear fruit. Indeed, as Jesus says in our gospel lesson this morning, let both of them grow together until harvest time. You see, if we try to decide which seedlings are weeds and which are wheat, we'll ruin the harvest. It is spirit that will discern amongst the weeds and the wheat. And we must only remain open to the work of the spirit in our midst. And if we can do that, the spirit's light will shine on us and we will shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Father. Let anyone with ears listen. All these years later, my friends, it needs to be said, the people of Navajo land, those Father Liebler thought he was coming to convert, in the end converted him. You see, you showed him the gospel in action, in your love for each other, in your love for creation, and in your love for creator. It was your love for that Belagana Edna Shodi that taught Father Liebler the deep truths of radical hospitality. You converted him to the Jesus way by living the beauty way. You boiled his heart for him. Like Jacob, Father Liebler could only exclaim, Surely the Lord was in this place, and I did not know it. I think that's why when Father Liebler grew old, he refused his family's wishes to return east with them. He chose instead to live and die here with you. My friends, my relatives, your work of conversion continues in our time. As I join you 
from delivering boxes of fresh produce, eggs, and milk to sheltering elders. You teach me the deep lessons of the Beatitudes. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. As you join me in building and planting raised garden beds in the rebuilt community garden at St. Christopher's Mission, you teach me the meaning of Jesus' command to feed my sheep. As you share with me the gift of your stories about this place and this people, stories of the land and the generations who have lived in harmony with it, you teach me what it means to live into the mission of God, that is the ongoing life of Creator in incarnation, revelation, and reconciliation between Creator and creation. My friends, something new is being born in this place and amongst this people. As Paul writes in our epistle this morning, the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. You, my friends, are bearing witness to what it means to make room for the light and the life of the Spirit of God. Your work in this place may well convert the church to the mission of God. It is certainly bringing new life to all our hearts. Shijay Shanich Beige. You boil my heart for me. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed, found at the bottom of page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you and we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and in our blindness we cannot ask through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit. 
that in all the cares and occupations of this life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of this earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Prayers of the People, found on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. My friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus.